you know, and get so caught up in that song. We just, I just want to sing it. Third verse. Well, just welcome everyone. If we just, uh, you know, things are just a little upside down a little bit. But I'll tell you what, when the Spirit of the Lord's present, you will joy. I don't care where you're from. In our own. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Everyone here is good to have a family here. Of course, you know what happened. And uh, so, uh, also, uh, John and Lisa, they've had to postpone their leave in the first of June down to July because of the flight problems and also the quarantine problems in Taiwan. <laughs> and if they go, they can't all be together. And then once they get into a quarantine, they cannot leave. They can't even visit each other. So they're trying to hang out here. And hopefully that's not up on the best. You would rather prepare it in order to use them while they're here. And uh, let's look at the Lord's Prayer and it's a blessing. Even today could be a very special day for each one of us here. Either if you don't know the Lord as your Savior, you can choose it and make it true. And if you are saved, I hope we can be encouraged that God is still in charge of us. Amen. I hope I can encourage you with that. Well, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord for your blessings. Thank you for uh, taking care, watching over us. And I know that the world, that we say it's a pandemic, and we know that. And we know there's things that we need to do and, and uh, help situation, but Lord, the truth is, you are our shield and protector. You're the one who holds the, the breath of our lives in your hand. And today I pray as we come together that our rejoicing and our praising and our worshiping will, will be a sweet sacrifice unto me. And Lord, bless now, bless each one here. Lift those burdens from those who are burdened down. And I pray for the one who needs the Lord Jesus today. It'll be easy for them to come to the cross. And Lord, we thank you what you do in advance. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Okay, I was going to say, please remain standing, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> My announcements are very short. Uh, I'll tell a couple of jokes. Uh, well, anyway, um, again, as I said, just thank you so much for being here today. Um, it's different, you know. We're trying to do our best to uh, not only, uh, as believers, worship together and do the needful thing. I mean, it is a very needful a life of believers to to uh, collectively come together and uh, preach and teaching and the fellowship and and uh, very important. Also, when you have a when you have a virus going around, you, know, you have to you have to be mindful of uh, uh, folks who are more susceptible not not just to catching it, but you know just the ability to uh, have a virus and get through it. And it's talking about our senior saints or those with you know different. Uh, Medical conditions and things like that. So we tried to we tried to do our best, and uh, for the uh, rest of May, what we'll be doing, if you have not caught the memo yet, for the rest of May, uh, on Sunday mornings, the morning worship is what we'll be doing, as we're doing right now, from 10:30 till noon. Okay, well, there'll be no Sunday night service, and on Wednesdays we'll be on Facebook. All right, so. Uh, we're on Facebook right now, and I, I, what I do is I take those videos and put them on YouTube. So, however, you know, if we have folks who are at home or whatever, uh, seniors at home, that uh, we try to make it possible for them to be able to join us. And really, I was kind of surprised by just how much uh, participation and response we had with our videos being online. And so, I, what we're planning on doing, we're planning on... Uh, even after the virus thing clears up, to continue having an online presence, okay? Now, uh, then this does not mean, okay, I'll just uh, worship it with you in bed, you know, type of thing. Uh, we're we're, we're going to maintain an online presence. And so, for people who may be homebound, <laughs> you just have to be right, you know, I can't see much farther than you, okay? Um, what, what we're going to try to do is, is to keep the Facebook going and the YouTube 
Uh, there is a couple of bugs and things we had to work out that when you do music, uh, the music may sound, you may hear a couple singers and no music in the background. You may hear all the music and no singers. And so what we did, we just leave everything unplugged until the preaching and plug in the preaching. And so that, that's crystal clear. Okay, I'd rather have that than just, you know, music be kind of so-so until we can figure out how to, what equipment we need. But we are, for the benefit of our, our folks who are homebound or maybe travel or whatever, and we have people who, I'm surprised how many people who tune in, uh, how far they are from, from here. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we're going to try to continue to have the presence of light. All right. Also, uh, there will be no... Um, our ushers will be no offering things like that uh, again for the month of May, but we do have our offering baskets at the door there. So if you, um, uh, again, I'm, I'm thrilled and, and blessed by just by the people, the faithfulness of the giving, the tithes. People kept coming in. I mean, I, I had tithe envelopes over the doors, you know, and, or uh, they come in, mail them, all those kind of different things. But, um, if you have your tithe and things, there's baskets out there by the door. Okay? That's what that's for. All right. And, uh, oh, um, very unusual year for our seniors who are graduating. Lori, you in here? There you are. Uh, Lori's daughter, Autumn, graduated this year. And uh, kind of weird when you have your. Did they do their graduation already, sort of? Not yet. Tuesday. It's kind of like a parade type thing. Yeah, like the Tri Counties is the same way. It's kind of a parade deal where they have to ride in a vehicle. We're not allowed in a vehicle. We have to be in a vehicle next to them. So you drive next to them and then they get out, get your diploma back in, and you drive away. Yeah, we you know. <laughs> Uh, we still out there in church that way. You know, we do the Lord's Supper, people just stop by. We'll work it out. We'll work it out. She had to go get picked Oh, okay. Well, I, we want to congratulate Autumn for her graduation there, but I do want to mention that uh, there, that you are invited uh, to an outdoor graduation open house in honor of her daughter. Um, Saturday, May 23rd, so that's next Saturday from 2 to 5 p.m. And uh, the the um, address will if you if you need the address come and see me. We're online, that's so I'm not that's at, Sam. at Sandy's house. Okay, okay. So that's why it says in the streets. Okay. okay. And Jenna, yes. Jenna graduated. All right. So my my niece graduated from Miami Trace. Congratulations. Anybody graduate? Anybody else graduate that we're not? <laughs> anybody still try to graduate? Tack it. <laughs> Lily tack it, then. Oh, Lily, yes. See? Lily graduated. Uh, so she's part of the, part of the, what do you, whatever, the parade. parade. <laughs> All right, well, you know, if you see those kids, uh, be sure to congratulate them. All right, before we start our last song there, um, I wanted to mention, uh, you know, some people, and we encourage, we encourage folks, if you have a mask, you like to wear it, don't feel, don't feel apprehensive that you're wearing a mask. And if you're not wearing a mask, don't feel apprehensive, all right? Don't judge me, I won't judge you, okay? Uh, but uh, we do encourage the, you know, the handshake and that type of stuff. If you want to do the elbows, that's good. Um, but again, just be mindful of, of the seriousness of the, you know, the nature of this virus. You know, uh, the, the, what it can do. So just be mindful of that. Wash your hands often. We do have um, those hand sanitizer things about where they're filled. All right, so if you know. <laughs> Someone touches you, go there real quick. And get something. All right. All right. Love this. All right. Please stay with me one more time. Heaven came down.
appropriate song we certainly we certainly can it can agree with that song and sometimes it's moment by moment in it I'm gonna I want to be a blessing today at the same time I'm so tired of talking about the coronavirus and all that I am you know but I tell you what it, it, I mean I am one moment I could spit acid and the next moment, you know, you hear some good things people are doing, and you you do see that. But uh, today, I wanted to entitle my message, uh, Truth Has Fallen in the Street. But then as I got along, and I thought, you know, I, but I want to change it, and I'll tell you what I want to change it to in just a moment. I just hope you can make sense out of it. But in Isaiah chapter 59, we're going to look at verses 14 and 15, then we're going to drop down for the sake of time, verses 19 through 21. It says, In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it pleased him that there was no judgment. It displeased him. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and its glory from the rising of the sun. We're in verse 19 now. When the enemy will come in like a flood, 
the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. My Spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and ever. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We pray you'd help us to be a blessing. I pray you'll make the preaching easy today, and I pray that you'll speak to hearts, comfort, and give only that you know. And I pray, Lord, to get to them place where only you can get. And I pray somehow you use these stammering lips and uh, season it with grace. Bless. At the end result, may bring honor and glory to you, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm convinced that with every crisis, and with every crossroad a nation faces, that there's either, on the other side of the decision they need to make, there's either the favor of God or there's consequences. America is in a position, much like Israel here in Isaiah, who was facing a major crisis as a nation, and they had to make some decisions. Now, we're in the same place. We've got, there's all kinds of decisions being made, being made for you. And there's a decision we're making. And we just better walk a little more lightly. Because I'm t- telling you, my dear friend, and I'm not talking about the coronavirus. I'm not talking about the pandemic, even though that it has got our attention, I believe. Not only as a nation, but I do believe worldwide. And with with that pandemic comes disease and death. And who would have thought two months ago when we had one of the best economy in the nation's history? We're now in the tank. In eight weeks, we're in the tank. Uh, massive unemployment numbers like we've never seen, they say, since the Great Depression. Businesses closing their doors, people being laid off. Business will never, some of them will never reopen again. And the federal government, oh, bless the federal government. They're printing trillions of dollars like there is no tomorrow. And perhaps more than all that was transpiring, fear has gripped our nation. Now, and I think it's the worst kind of fear. President Roosevelt, back during the depth of the Great Depression, he said, the only thing to fear is fear itself. Folks, outside of the Almighty God, fear is a destructive force. Nevertheless, I believe we have people in lofty positions that would like to keep the people of America in shackled in fear, until they accomplish their socialistic political ends. No doubt in my mind. I've never seen it like it's, it is today. COVID-19 brought us to our knees and did that in just a few short days. We, have, we see the government overreach into the lives of the American people. The Constitution of the United States is ignored when it's convenient. And when the government... And, just know this. Just write this down somewhere. When the government gives you shekels, shackles come with it. Every dollar the government gives out, every handout the government gives, you lose a piece of freedom. You lose. When they give you a dollar, where are they getting it? Who's going to pay that back? Nancy Pelosi? Now we have, as I said, we've witnessed some, some good responses that from, and that's to the credit of some good people, uh, many good people who responded to the needs of others. But we've also seen the nation so divided with political hatred. I mean, I've never seen such a division. Sinister plots. There was a coup, a coup attempt upon a duly elected president, and I believe you'll find, now they'll never do anything about it, 
It'll go up to the last ministration, all the way to the top. And no one to this day has been brought to justice. No one. You say, why? Well, in our text, verses 14, 15, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. They're seeing like their son to do anything they want to do, they can do anything, and all you hear is a bunch of rhetoric on newses, even the fox, all you hear, talk, 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 and nobody is supposed to be held accountable. You hope, you're hoping any day news will break, and but it hasn't. You say, why? Because truth has fallen in the street. Inequity, that is, impartial justice, cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. Now, the only cure for crooked politicians and lawlessness, chaos, and confusion. And I don't want to sound hyper spiritual, but I'm, I, you know, and I don't even know I'm talking. I've never experienced one. But America needs a deep spiritual awakening. There no, you know, we say every year, boy, this election, this is the big election. This one, this one, really decide. And every year we're telling the truth. But I'm telling you, we are facing some major, major hurdles in front of us. And you better have some confidence in the guy who's at least in the political uh, leadership, that's going to take it in the right direction. Will America ever see a spiritual waking? I don't know. However, regardless, Paul declared to us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, that even though it does or does not, he said, do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless as sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. That's where we're at. We are the children of God in a perverse, crooked nation. Among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life. And I'm going to interchange the word, holding forth the word of light. Light. The only beacon of light for dark days I think about the days of Gideon in his 300. When Gideon went against the Midianites, they were outnumbered by, I mean, thousands. And Gideon only is only three little 300. Surrounded the Midianites at night and had a lamp in a, in, a, in a clay jar. And at a certain time when they would shout, they would break that clear a, a jar and the light would shine up in the mountains and they would blow the trumpets and they were to shout, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. That's what the army of God needs. We need to shine the lights and shout. Amen? Now, however, when you stand for truth, notice he made this statement. Isaiah says, he that departed from iniquity or from evil maketh himself a prey. You will be a target. Make no mistake about it. The liberal social agenda will not leave you alone. I mean, they are trying everything. Listen, you notice in this pandemic, one of the major people they've gone after, and they've tried to silence, is the churches. They have no constitutional right to keep it from meeting. None. And they say, well, you know, we only keep open essential things. Well, you tell me what's more essential than meeting with God. Well, the Lord told Israel, as they faced their enemies, to fully trust Him. Now, that's easy for us to say. That's easier for me to tell you than to do it myself when the going gets tough. But in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 3, this is what the Lord said. He said, let not your hearts faint. Fear not and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. Let your hearts faint. Fear not. Let not your hearts faint. nor Fear not. And do not tremble. By the way, that is not a request. That's a command. 
I don't care if it's the, the coronavirus, what it is. Don't let your hearts travel, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you against the enemies to save you. Amen? Now, today we're facing troubles, and, and a lot of us don't even know what the others are facing, and beyond the virus thing, and things in the home, and financially, and medically. Uh, Tyler's grandparents last night was in on a head-on collision on 93, and she's at uh, Ohio State University with several broken bones and things, and we don't know, know all of it. But a lot of people are facing troubles, and or uphill struggles anyway. But I just want you to know, I have a strong word for you. I really, I want it to be a strong word for you, not my word. Troubles and trials are, you know, a part of our life here on earth. Job said that man that is born a woman is few, is few of days and full of trouble. He knew what he was talking about. But it's good to know that when trouble comes, when hell and havoc comes knocking on your door, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. In other words, now here's the title of my message. God's got your back. God's got your back. Now I'm not trying to be funny with it, but I'm just telling you, that's a term we, God's got your back. If those verses don't say that, I don't know what else they say. When the children of Israel has come to the end of their journey, when they go through the wilderness, they come to the banks of the Jordan, and Moses says to go over, and, and we're going to take the land that God's given to us. I mean, the Israelites did have no idea what they was going to be facing, and they were worried what they were going to encounter. But the Lord told Moses to tell them, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you. I didn't write it. Nor forsake you. That's what I told him in Deuteronomy 31. In other words, he was saying, tell them, Moses, you tell them, I've got their back. Go ahead. Go do what you're supposed to do and but just know this, I've got your back. We read in James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, then we're going to drop down to verse 12. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now, verse 12. Blesses the man that endures temptation. Well, I tell you, God, who wrote that? Some Baptist wrote that? A Baptist wouldn't write that. A Pentecostal might. A Baptist didn't write that. He said, uh, blessed, happy is a man that endures these troubles and temptations. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. How many want the crown of life? How many want to earn that trophy when you get the glory because you trust the Lord in the times of trials and trouble. You put your trust in the Lord. And the God said, because you trusted me, I want to give you this crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. In other words, the Lord was saying, I've got your back. In Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 14. Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. And don't, isn't that the first thing we do when we get in trouble? Lord, why me? Why has all this happened to me? I'm a good Baptist. Most of the time. Now, don't we? I mean, we, we, we begin to question why this going. But he said here, but think it not strange when these things happen to you, but rejoice. You say what? Get happy. I mean, shout. Rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. 
If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Now, folks, I don't know too many Baptists would have wrote that. And I'm in that group. I would probably go to the NIV version. But in other words, the Lord is saying, I've got your back. That's what he's saying. When life presents itself with ever-changing variables, we've got to realize that we serve a God who is stationary in his godness. He is the unmoved mover. For he told Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Now he told him, he didn't say sit at home and, and I'll take care of the battle out there. No, he said go, stand, and see. In other words, I got your back. You say, well, what is going on here? I mean, I know he's talking about Israel here. And Israel, is, the Ammonites and the Moabites have come against them in great numbers. And they get word that they're, I mean, they're going to be lay, lay, lay siege against them. They, and they really have, at a time, a low time in Israel's history. They didn't have a chance. But the Bible said in Jehoshaphat, and going up back to verse 3, Second uh, Chronicles 20, And Jehoshaphat feared, and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered himself together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court. And said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the, he of the heathen? And in thy hand is there no power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of the land before thy people Israel? And gave us it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever. I don't believe Jehoshaphat was reminding God what he promised and what he done. I think, I think, I think Jehoshaphat was reminding himself as he talked to the Lord. When you and I just talk back to God and the things he promised, we're not helping God in his memory. We're just reminding ourselves that what God said. Now, oftentimes we look to other people to have our backs, but I've experienced some things in this Christian journey, and this discovered some, I think, disheartening and discouraging news about people. I've discovered that folks will fade away when the fire gets hot. I've discovered that family and friends will forsake you when times get hard. But I heard the Lord say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I've got your back. <laughs> I've got your back. So here in Isaiah here, in our text, verses 19 to 21, I want to just quickly give you three um, truths that back of what I'm telling you, that God's got your back. Now, we've been shut in. We can't do this, do that, and all kinds of... Uh, listen. And all the stuff that's going on, you just need to know. Because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't, you, we just don't know. But God's got your back. If you know the Lord is your personal Savior, He's got your back. The first thing we see in verse 19, God's agent of power. Does God have an agent of power? He's the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that lifts up a standard. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rise of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now, we know he's talking about Israel and talking about these Moabites, Ammonites, are getting ready to storm against them. He so said, listen, I'm going to raise up a standard. The spirit of God. Amen. The spirit of God. 
If you know anything about it, they said, now they're going to come in like a flood. And if you know anything about floods, when they come, no matter how many sandbags you put up or how big the dam you've got, water has a way of getting over it, getting through and around everything you put up. Over the walls of the dam, <laughs> over the sandbag, it has a way when it comes over, it engulfs, it, is, it uh, overwhelms everything that it reaches. And such is the case with enemies in our lives. They have a way of doing that. For I've come to the startling and sudden realization that no matter how many spiritual sandbags you put up, no matter how big you think your dam is, the enemy just seems to get over and get around with his floodwaters. Now, I don't like it, but that's part of life. But our text says here, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. You don't lift it up. He lifts it up. And let me suggest this morning that we should not get so wrapped up in ourselves and in the problems that we're facing. I think you can get so problem focused. We can get so focused on the things that we're going through. We need to get off of that and get on the fact that God's got my back. God's got your back. Now, God never promised us we wouldn't have uh, troubles. He never told us we wouldn't be a, have assaults. And maybe assaults, they come from without, but they also come within. I mean, troubles sometimes come from those that are closer to you. And they hurt the worst. But he didn't tell us we wouldn't. He just said, I got your back. Now, the Holy Spirit, to lift up a standard that bears us up in times of weariness and weakness. That's what God's telling you. And we do get weary and weak when these things go on. Romans 8, 26, Paul said, Likewise, the Spirit, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. As the Spirit lifts up this standard. What is this standard? It's God's sovereign power. It's God's sovereign power. It is a lifting up of the very influence and authority of God. And because we are partakers of the Holy Spirit, we have a right to walk in that influence and that authority. We have the right to expect that God's got our back. We have that right to do that. Because God promised it to us. Now you can know that he has your back. He, he's the agent. He's the agent of God. He's the one that lifts up the standard, the signa, the banner that flies over us, that says, hey, we belong to God. We're his property. You see, he uh, is our paraclete. He's our comforter. He's our attorney. You ever need an attorney? Sometimes my mouth gets me in trouble. I need an attorney. He's our defender. And he's the spirit of the living God. When the enemy comes in to overthrow you, the spirit lifts up his standard and says, I've got your back. When he reminds you of your past failures, the Lord says, I've got your back. Every time the enemy tries to remind you of your past hurts, the Lord says, I've got your back. Every time the enemy tries to remind you of past heartaches, the Lord says, I've got your back. Can you say amen to that? So the first thing Isaiah said is about Israel, but also to you and I, is that when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will lift up a standard. Now, secondly, in verse 20, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression to Jacob, saith the Lord. Now, God's Son is our ever-present Redeemer. He's our ever-present Redeemer. Not only has God sanctioned the Holy Spirit to lift up a standard, but likewise he have, we have the ever-present Redeemer who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, for Israel, the, the Redeemer, the coming of the Messiah was foreshadowed uh, until its future fulfillment. But for you and I today, New Testament saints, it's already been fulfilled. The Lord has already come, and we are his purchased possession. We have been bought with the price at Calvary. 
He has come not only to redeem us from the penalty of our sins, and, but to come to deliver us from the enemy of the, uh, the hand of the enemy. Our ransom was paid in full. My debt was paid at Calvary. I think it's wonderful to know that we have a loving Redeemer, one who was willing to take our place, one who took my shame, took my blame, and because of redemptive work, we possess eternal life. Now, you forgive me this way I say this, but I'm glad he took my place. I'm glad he hung and bled and died on that cross for this old filthy sinner. He not only died for my sins, but you know he promised one day he's going to come back and get me. Amen? He not only died for your sins, but he promised, hey, I'm going to come back and get you. I want you to note the text or who he's coming for. Those who turn from transgression. Now we know he's talking about the remnant of Israel. Israel's always had a remnant that would turn to God. But I'm going to tell you what. But that includes you and I. We, You see, before you get saved, you've got to turn from your sins to the Savior. You repent toward God. Repentance toward God in faith in Jesus Christ. Without that, no one be saved. And so if you say, Preacher, I have repented. I repent of the fact that I'm a sinner and that Jesus Christ died for me and I accepted him as my Savior. The life of a true believer is a life of continual. Let me say this. You said, I repented and put my faith in Jesus. Let me tell you, our life is a continual life of repentance and faith. You don't repent one time, that's it. I mean, we mess up every day. There's things we do. We just need to, got to get a spiritual bath every now and then. And, and so uh, when the enemy puts anger in your heart, the Redeemer will reinforce you with his kindness. When the enemy puts discord in your spirit, the Redeemer will reinforce you with peace. When the enemy puts doubts in your spirit, the Redeemer will reinforce you with his faith. For Jesus is the reinforcer of righteousness. He is the ever-present Redeemer. Ever-present. Now, I know we say, boy, it's good to get back to the house of God and meet with God. When we left here, we didn't leave God here. When you leave today, you're not leaving God here. Amen. You're the temple of God. He lives in you. Wherever you go, he's there. Now, I admit to you, I'll tell you what, and that's why he designed the New Testament so that we can come together and worship him and fellowship and enjoy that camaraderie of the Holy Spirit among us. It is lifting. Now, lastly, the third thing I see Verse 21, as for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon me, my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of thy mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord from henceforth forever. God has covered us with his covenant. God raises up the standard of the Holy Spirit of God when the enemy comes in, when trouble comes in. We have the ever-presence of the Redeemer. And then, not only that, but he has covered us in his covenant. And I realize that God gave the covenant to Israel. But I'm going to tell you, the Abrahamic covenant, in a special way, deals with Israel. But we're included in it because Abraham is a father of those who believe. Amen? Verse 21, I believe, is affirming of the covenant that God gave to our forefather, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob before the coming of the Redeemer. It's his immutable promise. The Redeemer stepped on the page of human history and redeemed us. And in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10 confirms we are covered under the new covenant. And it's personal. For he says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their heart, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now, see if I got this straight. If he's my God, and I'm his child, then I should know he's got my back. I know he's got my back. Is he your God? 
Are you his child? Does he have your back? Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings. Under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. I wish somebody would tell me, God's got your back. Oh, just sit there. Don't say nothing to me. Somebody needs to say, Preacher, God's got your back. God's got your back. <laughs> Thank you. I'm under his covenant. God's got me wrapped up. He's got me tied up. And he's got me tangled up in Jesus. And you too. Amen? Amen? I'm glad that God's got me covered in His covenant. I'm glad He's got me covered in His goodness. If Psalms 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For Thou art with me, Thy staff and Thy rod, they cover me. Thou hast prepared the table before me, and the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with hope, my cup of hope. Surely in goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Somebody tell me God's got my back. I just read you the scriptures. I'm so glad God's got me covered. He's covered me in strength. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength and very present help in trouble. I'm sorry, but some of us don't believe that. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, Though the waters there of war be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling there of Selah. I'm glad God's got me covered. And then, not even covered with all that, but I've been washed in the blood. I've been washed in the blood. Romans, Paul said in Romans 5, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were sinners, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now receive the atonement. The atonement. The covering. The covering. God's got your back. I mean, won't you tell, tell somebody, somebody, you know, where you said, let's look to the person right next to you. God's got your back. If they look at you funny, just, God's got your back. God's got your back. If you don't remember anything when you leave here today, just know God's got your back. No matter what the news says, no matter what comes down the pike, God's got my back. It does not matter what you're going through, really. If family turns their back on you, when friends forsake you, just know through the storm, though the storms keep on raging in my life. And when sometimes it's hard to tell whether night from day. But my still hope is reinsured within me. When I run my course, I know he'll lead me to the Prepare a place, he promised. But if the storms do not cease until I leave here, and if the winds of adversity keep on blowing in my life, I know my soul is anchored in the Lord. How do I know that? Because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Amen? I hope today that you can leave here. And if you have never received Christ as your Savior, he wants to have your back. There is no one else. There is no one else 
There's no one, there's no greater friend than he that lays his life down for another. And he done that, that you can be saved. You're here today and, and this, this, all this stuff going on has been wearing on you. I talked to a man your day, he's been having panic attacks. And he just really got him on edge. I try to talk to him about the Lord. I don't think he knows the Lord. But I'm telling you, my friend, you and I don't have to suffer like that. We just need to change our thinking a little bit. Get your minds off of, as my kids tell me, get your mind off of Fox News. Amen. <laughs> and, get your, and don't let your mind go to the fake news. And just remember that God's got your back.